time, I'm marooned on an island in the South China Sea. Trapped by towering cliffs, it's the smallest location I've ever tried to thrive in. I'm up in the northwest of the country, heading to an uninhabited stretch of coastline on Karon Island. That's my beach. My mission isn't just to survive here, it's to thrive. Let's get this bug out. I need to focus and stay positive. This is going to be a challenge. Thank you, Abby. I have four key priorities. I don't think shelter is going to be a problem, and food and fire can wait. In this heat, water is the number one priority. You see, he's lying in the sand, and immediately there's coconuts. That's got fluid in it. <laughs> That's my first drink. I'm actually just looking around the beach, and although it's stunning, it's filthy. I got used to rubbish washing up on the beach, but this is much worse. Everything from a survival perspective is telling me this is good news. A heart perspective is just disgusted and deeply saddened, I suppose, by but what it doesn't have, unless I'm being really stupid, is uh, fresh water. But I do have coconuts. They're nature's sports drink, full of electrolytes and great at rehydrating my body. Ah. Done. I love coconut. <laughs> I really, really love coconut. I'm a bit obsessed with coconut. But I only have one, two, three, four, five coconuts left, so I need to ration them. three coconuts left. That's enough for today and tomorrow morning. So I don't really know what to do about water. Um, I suppose it is a case of exploring the coastline. The first thing to try is papaya. Fruit will give me energy and it's a little hydrating as well. Oh, these aren't ripe at all. Even vaguely recognise the taste, but <laughs> it's so bitter, it's inedible. <laughs> that is a setback. I keep foraging for food and water, but I need fire too. A rusty old nail gives me an idea. The theory, very simply, is that if I put the the nail in to the bottle, point first, and then shake it up and down gently. Essentially, that it should make minute fractures all around the outside of the bottle. That should eventually mean that the whole of the bottom comes off in one piece. I think it's getting close. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> now this is what I'm gonna use to try and start my fire. Producing a nice little spot. If I can make this work, I'll be able to cook food and purify water, if I manage to find any. Ow, that's hot. With the sun high in the sky, now is the time to do it. Position at the perfect height so that it, um... It's going, it's going. I've got a fire going. i got a fire going. <laughs> Ah, nice one. So nice not to have to break a sweat to get a fire going. Having a fire burning in my camp is a real psychological boost. <gasps> I'm in such a beautiful, wonderful place. Now for food. Rock pools exposed at low tide are a perfect starting point. Oh my God. I have found a secret lagoon. This spectacular lagoon could be rich in resources. And the first good news comes with spikes on. Wow, and that's food. If I can get past the spines, I'm gonna eat this live. Because in the heat, urchins decay very quickly. 
you only eat the gonads, which are the orange bits. They're packed with protein. So I can keep harvesting these and munching on them whenever I like. There's a sort of mangrove swamp just over there. Now mangrove could mean that there's water running down the gully that's above it. I need to make myself a flotation device if I find water, I'll need the flotation device to carry bottles. With no machete, I'm using fire to cut these bamboo pieces to size. The sharp edge of my bottle magnifying glass is great for cutting up the net. Add a few polystyrene floats and my vessel is complete. Oh, oh, oh. It's actually very cold in here. Whatever might lurk in this lagoon, I have no choice but to cross it on my quest for water. Button! It's a relief to be back on dry land again, even if it is a muddy mangrove swamp. Ah. <laughs> it's like another world. It's a little lost world in here. This is extraordinary and the mangroves could be a good place to find something. That little grub lives in mangroves. That taste of oysters. Oh, that tastes delicious. That's like sweet oysters. Oh, right, let's smash open some more mangrove. That is absolutely amazing. That. I thought it was the back half. It was hiding in the other half of the wood. It's called a tamilock worm, although they're actually a type of clam. They bore into wet wood, and in the Philippines, they're a delicacy. There's a, oh, crikey. The back half was a good bit. <laughs> I can't continue like this. I have to find water. With so many crevices in the limestone cliffs, I'm convinced there must be rainwater trapped here. Morning. I'm perfect. Oh, there, in that pool, in this. I want to high five myself, but I can't. <laughs> I really actually do want to high five myself. One sec, I'm going to high five myself. I've got my water, but it's um, it's fairly murky, so I want to filter it. So I'm just going to make myself a filter. Add a layer of sand, a layer of charcoal. Is uh, charcoal from the fire. That should make the basics of a filter that can get this clean. The sand should remove some of the bigger stuff, and charcoal has been used to purify water for hundreds of years. I pour the first bottle through. But to be doubly sure there are no germs, I boil the filtered water too. Water now sorted, I've got fresh rainwater. Once boiled, I can even convince myself it's a wonderful cup of tea. Real survival is not glamorous. <laughs> Real survival is about scrabbling around and going to extraordinary efforts to produce quite trivial results. And, uh, I think it's really, really important now. Um, I'm running out of time and I need, I need to eat well. I need to eat well before I leave this um, beach. And to do that, I need to go fishing. Once again, the trash comes in useful. This time, for making bottle traps. You take the top of a bottle, you invert it, you push it in, and therefore you create a big aperture that fish can swim in and a small aperture inside that fish can't swim out and they get stuck inside. I've seen rock pools with lots of fish. They may be small, but if I catch enough of them, they'll be enough to make a hearty meal. So I laid 10 bottle traps. But with a few more ingredients, I should be able to make myself a soup. I know that local tribesmen around here climb the cliffs for swift's nests and they make quite a delicacy and make a soup out of it. 
So I was just wondering if I climb in that cave, whether I'd be able to find the um, the nest. Wow! Look at that. Apparently these. The white bit is actually the saliva of the bird. In certain parts of the world, these are delicacy. Bird's nest soup goes for a lot of money. And uh, I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna take this back to my camp and have myself bird's nest and fish soup. Oh, I've got a fish. <laughs> and one rather small fish. It's like a loach. You see that in the bottom? Hello, mate. Look at that. <laughs> okay, washed, scaled, and um, totally gutted. Button. This plant here behind the camp, I believe, is tamarind. I'm just going to put some of the leaves in my bird's nest soup to add a bit of um, tamarind flavour. Tamarind is a real find. Its leaves are packed with goodness, and it's great for your guts. The bird's nest, I expected to sort of um, completely disintegrate. And maybe with time, it does. Oh, that tastes quite good, actually. What does it taste like? Um, it tastes like noodles, I suppose. Oh, it's a wonderful soup as well. It really feels like I'm putting loads of nutrients into my body. Oh, that was the head of the fish. Amazing. Definitely the best meal since I've been here. This is the first time I've felt on top of the situation. <sighs> Acceptance. When you set what is, every moment is the best moment. When you fight against it, then you're angry or annoyed or frustrated or pissed off. But when you accept it, life's good.